Welcome to People Who Perform, the Real Estate Careers Podcast. Each episode will bring you conversations from business leaders and up and coming stars in the commercial real estate industry in Canada. Our guests will share their unique career journeys, passions, and advice on what it takes to be successful in this industry. This podcast is brought to you by Highview Partners, connecting people who perform in Canadian real estate. I'm your host, Richard Costello, and today I'm pleased to introduce Brandy Cooper. Brandy is currently the Director of Property Management with Warrington Residential, responsible for overseeing a growing portfolio of purpose-built rental buildings located throughout the Lower Mainland. Brandy has been immersed in residential property management for close to 15 years, starting out managing portfolios of individual units on behalf of investors to managing apartment buildings for established developers through to her current role leading the operations for the third-party management company, Warrington Residential, which includes leasing and launching brand new purpose-built rental projects. In our conversation today, we'll hear more about Brandy's career journey, what's happening at Warrington Residential, Brandy's experience launching brand new purpose-built rental properties, as well as Brandy's lessons and advice for aspiring residential property professionals. Brandy, thank you, first of all, for joining me today. It's really great to have you on the podcast. Absolutely, Richard. Thank you. It's my absolute pleasure. As I was reading through that introduction, I, I, uh, which I've kind of scripted for myself, I realized I sort of made it a bit of a, a tongue twister with all of the... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I've got my um, lips around these words now. So anyway, to start things off, what can you tell us about your early years? I guess your, your kind of interests from that formative part of your life and any influences that uh, that helped shape you and your your sort of future direction and this, uh, I guess the follow-up question is you know, how, how did you get your start in, in the real estate industry? Absolutely so I I, I watched my my parents really um, invest in properties um, I, I watched my mom renovate flip properties rent properties and I found myself gravitating to wanting to be involved with it. Um, she, as I got older, she started asking me to help out a little bit here and there. And, and that, that's really where it started. I originally um, planned to get into sales, um, be, but before I pursued getting my license, I worked for a small developer in Kelowna um, that built and sold luxury homes. So I got to spend a lot of time in the office, lead tours and show homes. Um, I found a really interesting, fun, flexibility of work hours. I enjoyed the balance between the administrative work and the on-site requirements. And I really started developing an interest in investment properties. So then I, I started managing some family properties, which led me to redirecting my focus towards getting my property management license. Um, so shortly after I was licensed, I started working right away in a small brokerage in Cold Harbor, and I've never turned back. Question about your experience being a single unit property manager, and I'm not sure if that's the correct sort of way to, to phrase it, but you mentioned you were working at, a, I guess, an agency in Cole Harbor where you're, you're managing properties on behalf of, of different investors. So do you mind explaining like how, how that role works? Sure. Um, so let's say you have an owner with an investment property and they wanted to find a tenant. Um, we would discuss what their rental needs are, determine a rental range or rate that they're comfortable with. At that point, the homeowner has a couple of management options. Um, so the first one being placement only. And this is where the agent will only find a tenant for the homeowner and, and they manage the property themselves. The second option is placement with management. And that's where the agent not only places the tenant for the owner, but manages the property for the duration of the tenancy. And this involves everything from responding to maintenance requests, collection of rent, routine inspections, um, and even processing strata fees uh, payments on the owner's behalf if they request it. So once this is established, um, I would proceed then to take photos or video of the property, prepare rental ads, schedule showings, screen the applicants. Once a tenant is found, um, we'd prepare and execute a tenancy agreement, again, collection of the deposits, and move the new tenant into that property. Yeah, that's that's generally how it works with private. I call them privately owned properties, but single. Right. Yeah. And I guess are you responsible for 
for building that that business out you can get referrals and sort of manage yourself accordingly absolutely um in order to grow your business in in that sort of area of property management, it's really important to build trusting relationships with your clients and tenants. When clients are happy, they will refer friends, family, and they're going to bring you reoccurring business. Like what were the pros of, of, of starting your career um, in, in that line of work? Earlier on in my days, I found that I had more of an entrepreneurial spirit, and this really allowed me that flexibility of creating my own schedule, really managing my own little portfolio within within a brokerage. So that was one of the, I think, the, the greatest um, pros for me is that flexibility and, and being independent, if you will. And so how did you find making the transition from managing a portfolio of, of single units, investment properties, to then managing entire apartment buildings? So managing a portfolio of single units, like I mentioned, it's like running your own little business within a brokerage. Um, Generally, you're responsible for a portfolio of privately owned properties. These properties that I've managed in the past range from uh, single detached homes, laneway homes, basement suites, and condominium suites in strata complexes. Um, In multi-unit management, these properties typically consist of larger number of units in one building, often with shared common areas and facilities. Um, for me, there were, a, there were a couple of really notable differences transitioning to the building management. Um, first off is scale. So managing single rental units involved overseeing individual properties, often on a smaller scale in multiple locations. Um, also, each unit is treated separately and you're typically dealing with multiple owners. In multi-unit complexes, you're able to manage a significantly greater number of units because of the efficiency of traveling to one property, and you're generally reporting to one owner. The second one is maintenance. The maintenance responsibilities are more extensive in a multi-unit property, um, as you need to oversee and upkeep now of common areas, landscape, and share amenities in addition to those individual units. Um, Another one is tenant relations. Um, So we're dealing with a larger number of tenants. You must manage tenant interactions, um, address disputes between residents and coordinating services for now an entire property. Marketing and leasing. Marketing efforts often target a property as a whole. Um, Leases might be structured differently with variations in terms and pricing for different units and expectations related to services that that building might provide. And then lastly, a big one is preparing the annual operating budgets, um, identifying some shared expenses and reporting to ownerships of the property. I really recognize that there was an opportunity for career advancement in multi-unit management and the ability to specialize in specific areas, whether it was building operations or even leasing. Um, There's certainly greater team involvement in the management of buildings. Um, And your team generally consists of your property accountant, property administrator, leasing coordinator, your building manager or building operator, and of course, the property manager themselves. Um, And the team really has to work cohesively in order to function as a whole, because not one person can manage such such a complex property themselves. It really takes a team of individuals to make it successful. Brandy, what, what, if anything, did you take from your experience of managing single units that, that you that you brought into the multi-unit side? Yeah, I mean, the advantage for me is, is really being part of the entire process from meeting the client, being very involved with that, that tenant um, location piece, moving the tenant into the unit. Um, really being involved in that entire cycle of property management has really helped me to become a well-rounded property manager i've learned to how to be detail oriented seeing things from the tenant's perspective understanding what's important from the renter as well and knowing what their expectations are when moving into the rental unit i feel like that's a very important piece um, and, and an important one to recognize as a property manager To what extent do you consider a company's values when making a career decision or choosing a business partner? The values that we embody at Highview Partners are integral to everything that we do. Be the best. Do what's right. Force for good. And enjoy the journey. Guide every step of our process and influence our actions and behaviors. 
This podcast series was inspired by the value, enjoy the journey. This means bringing people together, building meaningful relationships within our industry, and giving back to the communities that we care deeply about. For more information, please visit us at highviewpartners.ca. What can you tell us about Warrington Residential for anyone who might be unfamiliar? Yeah, so Warrington Residential is the residential arm of Warrington PCI Management. Um, We officially launched the Warrington Residential brand in the last half of 2022. Um, Warrington PCI Management, we're a third party property management company. All of our portfolio is is really within Vancouver, with the exception of the line in Surrey. Um, Our properties will range from, you know, wood frame walk up properties in, in the range of anywhere from eight to 15 units. To of course our uh, new rental project in Surrey at the line with 371 units. So, in total, we are just over a thousand rental units in our portfolio. Uh, our team is rapidly growing. Currently, we have three licensed property managers on the residential team, two full-time property administrators that help support our day-to-day functions, and of course our leasing specialist. Fantastic. We came to visit you earlier this year at the line at the King George Hub and you gave us a, a tour of the property which was which was really interesting. Uh, for anyone that's that's not familiar, King George Hub in Surrey is a master plan multi-phase transit oriented development by PCI developments. Um, I think it was the first first rental tower to launch in that particular development. It's 39 floors. Did you say 371 units? Yeah, 371 units actually is 35, 35 floors. And yeah, I mean, you, you know this property better than anyone, Brandy. What, what's special about, about the line? Yeah, the line is an incredible rental purpose built property. PCI has really outdone themselves with this project. It's one of the first of its kind featuring some spectacular amenities. We have an entire floor dedicated to facilities for the residents. There is a multi-games room, fully equipped fitness facility with a yoga studio. We have two social lounges, an outdoor seating area and playground, library, a theater, plus a fantastic rooftop patio on the 36th floor. Um, The suites themselves are beautifully designed, quality finishes, um, air cooling, and we have plenty of EV charging stalls for the residents to use as well. At the King George Hub itself, um, you have access to shops, restaurants, groceries, and transit right outside your doorstep. So it's really a convenient and and wonderful place to live. Yeah, it's really becoming like a second city centre, isn't it, of of Surrey? It sure is, Yeah. yeah. So I can imagine leasing up a building like the line is a huge undertaking. How has the market changed? Like when you're thinking about new projects, how has the market changed since launching the the line? Yeah, I mean, it it seems to be changing so rapidly. We're uh, approaching almost two years of when our first residents moved into the line. I can't believe it already. Um, But since then, rental rates have increased uh, significantly, particularly over the past 12 months. However, there is still an overwhelming strong demand for rental housing. Um, On the flip side, uh, the cost of operating a building has also increased, and we've had to find some more creative ways to be efficient while being able to provide that high level of customer service to our clients and tenants. And when you're, I guess, thinking about future launches, like the experiences that that you took from um, opening the the line, maybe lessons learned, mistakes made, like what what are you going to be applying to to new projects? What, What were the takeaways from that experience? Yeah, so I mean, applying the lessons learned from the previous lease ups to future projects is a valuable practice in real estate development and property management. So it allows us to refine our strategies, improve efficiency, and increase the success rate of future lease up efforts. So, for example, um, documenting the process, of course, keeping detailed records of the lease up process, um, including marketing strategies, timelines, and budgets, and results. Um, analyzing the data and metrics. So for example, reviewing the data, um, key performance indicators from past lease ups, vacancy rates, leasing velocity, conversion rates, for example. Um, And of course, identifying the success factors and challenges. So determining what worked well in the lease ups, identifying marketing channels, advertising methods, um, strategies, 
that generated the most leads and conversions, but equally important is recognizing what didn't work and the challenges faced during that previously and what can we do better um, in the future to, to help improve them. Um, a couple more things that I found important are obtaining tenant feedback. Nothing more important than actually going to the clients themselves and finding out what what is important to them. So collecting feedback from those tenants who participated in previous lease ups or existing tenants, understanding their experience and concerns and how we can improve that tenant onboarding process in the future. Um, and last but not least, leveraging technology. Um, we're always looking at exploring innovative property management and marketing technologies that maybe weren't available in previous lease ups. Um, definitely utilizing property management software, virtual tours, and an online leasing platform have helped to streamline the process. As you're launching these projects and, and managing the, the buildings like on behalf of, of, of a development company like PCI, how close do you get to that team that's involved in, in the development and the planning from a perspective of sharing your, your feedback on like what, what new developments should should look like and what that experience is so how, how does that how does that work yeah so i mean we are very fortunate to be able to be part of the process and and pci involves us in some of the the pre-planning stages of a rental development um, we've recently been able to provide suggestions to the development team based on past experiences tenant feedback um, and of course, identifying some of the successes and challenges, particularly with our most recent lease up of the line in Surrey. Um, so having this opportunity to apply these lessons from previous lease ups, we, we have the opportunity to enhance the property management and real estate development strategies to minimize risk, um, increase the likelihood of a successful lease up for future projects, and of course, take the pieces that work the best out of that lease up project and apply it to future ones. So it's been a, a a privilege to work with PCI and and a really special opportunity that again most property management companies don't have uh, that opportunity to do so. So we're, we're very fortunate. And you mentioned, I guess, reducing risk and and what, like what would be an example of of you being able to share something that would ultimately you know reduce risk the next time around? For example, you know, in in mitigating uh, leaks or plumbing issues. Um, giving some feedback on the type of fixtures that we potentially use, um, what were some typical maintenance issues that we potentially had with some of the existing um, products used. So providing that feedback, it kind of helps us develop a stronger, better product and um, to minimize like those downtimes. From a sustainability perspective, I think apartment buildings, high-rise rental uh, projects that most would agree are more environmentally friendly um, just by virtue of their density but how, how does Warrington Residential approach sustainability and environmental initiatives and, and what steps are you taking to minimize the the, the impact of, of your properties? Yeah, so Warrington Property Management, we take these initiatives quite seriously and we want to do our part to make significant contributions to the environment and become a leader in this department. Um, we've been evaluating our current property management practices, identifying areas where sustainability improvements can be made. Um, our executive team has been leading the conversations about the importance of sustainability and how we can translate some of these practices into the buildings we manage. We are obtaining green building certifications like LEED and BOMA Best. Um, An energy audit is a great starting point to identify areas for energy improvements. I'm reviewing your HVAC systems, lighting, waste reduction, um, education to the tenants, and even within the rental units themselves, we're switching over towards low flow faucets and energy star appliances. Um, every little bit helps. And so looking ahead, like what, what excites you? What are you looking forward to at work over the next, the next year or so? Yeah, well, we have, like I said, some really exciting new rental projects coming our way um, in the next uh, couple of years. So I'm, we're really excited to, to bring these new projects on. Um, Purpose-built rental is um, it's a really exciting part of what we do. Um, so, yeah, I'd say that's probably what we're looking forward to the most in the next couple of years. 
All right, Brandy. Well, thank you. I really appreciate your time and giving us some insight and, and perspective on on uh, yeah what's like a growing part of this of this industry. So thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for listening to People Who Perform, the Real Estate Careers podcast brought to you by Highview Partners, a talent search and recruitment firm focused exclusively on Canadian real estate. If your real estate team is looking to find the best next hire, or if you're ready to make the best next move in your career, then reach out to Highview Partners today. Follow us on LinkedIn and visit us at highviewpartners.ca.